Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of Changing the Narrative with me, Jay Shakur. I'm excited about this conversation. This was one of those conversations that I wanted to have for a very, very long time. And I am grateful, I am happy that I finally was able to have this conversation. It's with Dante Lee. He's a youth pastor, I dare say an influencer, a bodybuilder, and just an all-around great man of God. And I got to talk to him. Talk about his life, his freedom, the freedom he found in Christ and fitness, a department I need some help in. It was it was an amazing, an amazing conversation that I hope you all learn something from. I'm grateful. I'm excited to bring this conversation to you all in this edition of Changing the Narrative. You don't become what you want because so much of wanting is about living in the space of what you don't have. I believe that we all share this common desire. We all want to be liked. We all want to be accepted. Everything we do in some way considers that fact. You can't play life if you don't have a vision. You don't build your character because, you know, you know, letting go of your ego. Thank you for listening. All right, everyone, on this edition of the podcast, I have Dante Lee. Um, he's someone who I connected with through social media. Uh, he is the founder, owner of Nothing Without Jesus. It's a clothing line. Um, and I wanted to talk to him today because I believe he has a lot of, in the traditional sense, they wouldn't be controversial. Uh, but I think in the times that we currently live in, they can be deemed controversial. So I want to talk about, you know, some of his beliefs, his journey. Um, so uh, I'll say the word, I'll say where you say the first thing comes to your mind. Okay. All right. All right. Um, unity. The body of grace. Elite. I don't know that one. <laughs> um, family. The body of Christ. Uh, politics. I hate it. Okay. Uh, work. More of it. Uh, love. Jesus. God. Jesus. Okay. All right. So, just for people who don't know about you, who you are, just give a just talk about who you are. Like, who are who is rather Dante Lee? Man, I'm a 24 year old uh, evangelist. Um, I just took on a role as youth leader uh, in October. And um, man, I just live for the Lord, man. Everything I do, I do it for him. Uh, I do natural bodybuilding as well. Um, it's an opportunity for me to not only just um, help kids physically, but I get to help them spiritually as well. Um, but just love telling people about Jesus, man, and just bringing all the glory to him. That's good. Natural bodybuilding. Tell me more about that. Um... <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm trying to get in some type of shape, so okay. Um, it's been a journey for me. How's that for you? What's what what is that particular uh, journey been? Man, it's it's awesome. Like I was always raised like very forcefully to be in the fitness because my dad forced me into football and stuff like that, and always had me training and like I'd be doing like if I get in trouble, hundred pushups straight. I'd be doing them until I was crying. And like, I got to a point where I, I hated all that stuff. But like when I first got saved almost four years ago, it was like, Holy Spirit just lit this passion in me to want to just better myself and just like take care of the temple that he gave me. So I went into that man and just like seeing the progress really motivated me and seeing like how I felt, I didn't feel so sluggish, you know, I was mobile, I was athletic, you know, just, and I want to be able to, I want to last in the long run, I want to be, 60 uh 60 years old and just sitting you know sitting in my chair watching tv 
Like I want to be out, I want to be active, you know, I want to be able to keep up with the, the, the generation coming up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, Four years ago, you mentioned you got say four years ago. Um, what was your journey to that? I, I've seen your video. Uh, it, it, I, I guess you could say uh, it went viral. Um, you share your testimony. What recap that story for us, if you will? What led you to Christ? Man, <laughs> so I grew up in a I can't even call it a Christian home. Um, my dad is very legalistic. I love him, but it's always been a struggle to have that relationship with him. Um, grew up in a very, very uh, abusive household. I remember I, I've never shared this in my testimony. It's going to be the first time I'm sharing this, but I remember I would get woken up out of bed and my dad would beat me with whatever was closest to him, whether it was a shoe, uh, a hanger, whatever it was, man. And just like, I just grew this resentment for, for him and cops were always showing up to the place and mom cheating on him, just all this different stuff. Uh, dad threatening uh, the other dudes and stuff. So why and, the you know, why the particular you know waking you up out of your sleep and why why, why that I did things that was bad but like he, he just took it to the extreme and I know that he wasn't raised with a um, the right father figure um, it was kind of the same thing so he was kind of modeling that but I can just tell he just had so much anger in him and just. All that stuff and i didn't eventually see that until i was about like 18 19 when like they got divorced um but yeah man it was so me and my sister like <laughs> this is stuff i never shared in my testimony either but i hated my sister i would uh, at times i would bully her even though i would know that people were bullying her at school and stuff like that um what my dad would man i was just such a hateful person bro like the stuff that like i was around just the the, not the affection from my parents, just none of that stuff. Like I, I got bullied sometimes in school and just like things was just building up and building up and building up. And like, that was kind of like my release in the sense. But my dad would, um, he would give my sister the boxing gloves and he would tie my hands behind my back and he would have my sister just start wailing on me. And just like, it, yeah, like people don't know this, but like when I lived in Florida, man, like I lived in a solid piece of the hood. Like I was around all this stuff but I never became it, you know? So I grew up like, like when people talk about like all the gang stuff and stuff going on today, like it's nothing compared to like what it used to be. But yeah, man, after that we moved, it, it was always moving back and forth, Florida, Pittsburgh, Florida, Pittsburgh, church, church. Cause my dad uh, always had like these, these doctrines that um, if the pastor wouldn't preach what he wanted to preach, he would call him a false, a false teacher. So I kind of ran with that because I didn't know much about, you know, the Bible and all that stuff. And uh, we moved back to Pittsburgh and then went to another church and called them false teacher. And I just got into the loop where, OK, I'm just going to church to hang out with the women, hang out with my friends, eat food, you know, get away from that toxic environment. And then that just led on and led on. And like I've always heard about anxiety and depression, but when it hit me, that's when I knew. So when my parent, my mom divorced my dad she met another dude ended up eventually marrying him he was he was a jewish guy but he was he had he, he, he talked to us in a certain way to kind of rub me a little bit different so i had to kind of leave the house because just you know play it safe um but yeah man like i'd say i never all all throughout school i was either high just down in the slumps depressed because this is high school, I, I, right? High school, uh, m m most of middle school. Like, really? I never paid attention. So, like, these days, I've always, I've never had the knowledge of this world. Like, it's only the wisdom that the Lord has given me. Like, all the stuff you see on social media and stuff, that's all from the Lord, man. Like, I, I didn't even graduate high school. I did, uh, I dropped out uh, senior year and I did cyber school because that's when, like, I started getting addicted to drugs and stuff and, like, I was losing my mind, bro. There were so many times where, like, I would just walk like miles and just like just sit in corners, man, and just shout and just cry because, like, I didn't know what was going on. And then I see my sister get depression really bad, and I remember there was dudes that were bullying her in school and just all this stuff. And like, bro, I wanted to raise like 
trying to find out like who was doing this, you know, all this stuff. I'm like, so I got all this stuff coming to me back and forth, back and forth. And I didn't know where to go. So I started, I, I get in the, I, I couldn't go a day without smoking weed, man. I, I started, pick, I picked up acid. I did that the first time and got addicted to that, bro. It got to the point where like, I would order this stuff offline. I would walk around school with it in my socks, bro, just waiting to get home to trip. There'd be times where I'd be walking around school, my my, my uh, pupils still dilated, bro, because I'm still tripping. Like, bro, every time I, I would just do something to escape, man. And like, I was really on my wits end, man. I was about to take my own life. And I remember my dad of all people I wanted. What, what was the, because would you say it was the abuse that, drove you to the drugs because typically some very few people if any ever wake up and say hey i want to be addicted to drugs right Mm -hmm. you ask a kid a little kid it sounds silly but i'm Mm -hmm. I'm being very serious you ask a little kid which one be when you grow up they don't say i want to be addicted to this i want to be a drug addict to that um and something triggers that that go to right um Mm -hmm. that addiction so what do you think triggered that for you man it was just Things were just building up one after another. It was definitely a majority, just how, with the environment I was in, how I was raised. But I think the thing that really set it off is when I see my little sister try to kill herself a few times and end up in the psych ward. That was just like, it was like, I didn't even feel my brain in my head at that time. And that's when I was just like, okay, like in a sense, I was looking for Jesus, but in all the wrong places. Mm-hmm. And that's when that I just, just got addicted to all that stuff, man. And just like, bro, this is how I know God like had his hand on me, bro. Because I remember one time I was walking with my friend. It was like midnight. And we were just out uh, smoking on the street, thinking nothing of it. I guess somebody called. Bro, I still had the smoke in my lungs. And I still had the pipe on the side of me. And this cop pulls up. And he stops. He goes, what are you guys out here doing? And I'm like, we're like, nothing, officer. And he goes, uh, if I search you right now, I won't find anything on you. And we're like, no. And like he ended up going away, but bro, like just like little moments like that, like I just know God just had his hand on me, man. And just like all that running and just running. But yeah, long story short, man, uh cut say like October uh twenty ninth will be four years of me being saved. So about that time, my, my my daddy out of all people I want to hear from, my dad, he goes, There's a guy named Lee Grady, James Lee Grady, speaking at a church. Why don't you come over? Why don't you come check it out? I'm like, what could possibly go wrong? You know, like I'm at my wits end here. And I go and I was addicted to pornography. I thought it was seven years. It was 12 years. This kid introduced it to me when I uh, first moved to Florida. It was my next door neighbor. He showed it to me one time. And bro, it was literally like like a hook in my mouth, bro. Like I couldn't get away from it. Yeah, that's It was like a um, dark cloud over me the rest of my life, bro. Yeah, that's how... Uh, for me personally, um, that's how I was introduced to pornography. Uh, it necessarily wasn't a neighbor, it was a friend. It's kind of similar. Um, from school, in middle school, I think it was eight or nine. Um, I had just gotten saved. I got saved at, I got saved at nine years old. So it was right after in that same time period, right? You, and you, you know the high, that it, it's like a high when you first get saved, right? Yeah. Um, and so I was still on that, that, that high, um, and my friend, I had just got a, a, um, a laptop for Christmas or my birthday or something. Um, and he pulls it up and shows me it, it you know, so I, I understand that. Go ahead. What yeah, man, it was, like, it was so bad, bro. I couldn't, I couldn't look at one woman without sexualizing it or undressing her in my mind. Teachers classmates people in church like bro it was so bad i would be on the balcony of the church watching pornography bro skipping away to the bathroom at school to watch pornography sometimes even in the classroom like pulling to the side to watch it like it was such a stronghold in my life man that was the biggest thing out of the drugs out of the anxiety the depression pornography was the it was the hook man but mm-hmm. when I, I went to this church and this guy, James Lee Grady, he starts speaking. And of course, the first thing he starts speaking on is pornography. And you know me, a rebellious kid, man. I'm just like, whoa, what's this man talking about here? 
So I'm like, <laughs> and we, we had the old pews at the time. So I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'm going to let him go on a little bit more. And within like 30 seconds, bro, it was literally like, you would have thought this man knew me my whole life. It was like, God dropped down a mirror and just reviewed my whole life to me. And bro, there was nothing I could do. When I say there was nothing I could do, it was literally like the hand of God just grabbed me, pulled me up there. And bro, like, I'm just standing there. Like, I've always heard about people falling out, being filled with the Holy Spirit. I was just like, yeah. But man, when I tell you, I was the most hateful person. No love in my heart. You would never catch a, a legit smile on my face. Darkness in my eyes, in my face. This guy starts prophesying over me, man, and I'm just weeping, weeping. I never we cried like that. And I remember within a few seconds, I was out. The church was let out, and I'm still laying out on the ground. Bro, and the Lord's just filling me and filling me. I remember getting up. I was so drunk in the spirit, but I had a legit smile on my face. Everybody in there was like, you came in here with darkness all over you. You came out a new man. And that guy, James Lee Grady, he pull, he comes over next to me and he goes, hey, man, what's your name? I'm like, Dante Lee Grady. He's like, no way. My name's James Lee Grady. That guy took me under his wing, man. And he mentors me. He's my spiritual father. I remember, I think it was like a few weeks after that experience, I went to uh, Erie and I got to speak at a church that he was speaking at. I got to share my testimony. Then I went to uh, Tennessee. I went to Ohio. I went to Georgia. This man just bring, bring me along with him, man, and just invest his life in me and like show me the the importance of discipleship, like real discipleship. Like yeah. it's not just some like, oh, I'm gonna disciple you and just let you go do your thing. No, it's like I invest my life, my time into you. Like this is to the end. Like I want you to surpass me. And when I seen that model, bro. It just, it sparked something in me, man. It really did. But yeah, man, that's that's a little short, short part of my testimony. That's that's really amazing. I love that. Um, how has it been? Uh, that's, a, that's really a quick, swift transition. Um, addicted to drugs, <laughs> pornography, and then traveling sharing your testimony was there a a period of like how did you adjust to that because it seems you know to be kind of quick you know i'd say as far as like okay so when the first time i shared like i was just like okay god this is what you want me to do i'm gonna do it so i remember sharing testimony like i never had like nervousness like that like before it's going in front like i shared in front of 100 men at the men's retreat beforehand but when he said I was going to be sharing in front of a whole church, like it's different when you're sharing in front of women too. <laughs> yeah. But um, it was just a gradual thing that um, there were definitely some times that like I would let self get in the way, but then the Lord would just have to humble me. And then after like the sixth trip, maybe that's when things just kind of went on pause. And it's funny because everything else became dead to me except the pornography. That's the one thing that I noticed that would slightly come back. And I would realize that it wasn't until, if I'm being 100% honest, it wasn't until or late last year that I compl- like became completely set free. Like no temptation to it, no no slipping, nothing. Like, like I got to a point where I was just like, God, like why do I keep slipping up? And there was a part of me that still enjoyed it. And that alone just broke me. I was like, God, if there's anything in me, it's not of you. Take it away, please. And I remember I got to the point where I was like, I don't want anything, anything that could possibly take me down that rabbit hole. So I was uh, following people, muting certain words, like watching what I listened to, watch everything. And like, it just made all the difference, bro. You really can did. words on social media? Bro, I, I found it. So the thing is, like, <laughs> on I, Twitter, I, yeah, because i seen the word uh, COVID so many times, I was literally getting headaches. <laughs> so I was like, okay, bro. And I went to my settings and stuff, and I seen muted words. I was like, oh, shoot. So I went in there, and I started typing it out, these different words. 
Oh, I'm right. gonna try that. I'm gonna yeah, bro, it's that. dope. <laughs> um, let's get into um. You, okay, let's just start approach it this way. So I, I said the word, and you said, and you, you said the first thing that came to your mind. I said politics. You said hate. Why that? <laughs> oh man. Okay, so it's because of the quick response thing, but like I believe that we. Just the way that I've seen it um, and the way that Christians have turned it into and just uh, I've seen a lot of letting it become um, letting it be, take that place of God in a sense, especially a lot in the in the Christian world, too. Um, I was never knowledgeable in that area at all. But just after just like following like people like you and uh, stuff like that, I've, I've learned some different things here and there. Um, but I do believe that Christians shouldn't completely back away from that. Um, they should definitely stand in that stand for uh, biblical righteousness um, mm-hmm. and just pushing for, you know, think the God's agenda. Um, but like when I hear the word politics, man, I just think of the last election. It just like <laughs> it, you ever see that that one episode of SpongeBob where it's just fire everywhere and it's just running all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's yeah. literally how it was, bro. So like, it just kind of <laughs> gave me a, a bad taste for me. I I, I I totally understand that. Um. Uh. So you would say? <sighs> would you say that you're apolitical? In the sense, well, in, in, in the sense of um. Uh, like okay, for me personally, I'm not obviously mm-hmm. I'm not apolitical. If you follow me on social media for five minutes, you'll know that. But um, I don't identify with one particular. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican uh, mm-hmm. at, at all. Uh, I'm a Christian first, and I vote my values. And so when I would you say you're that way or would you say that you're apolitical, meaning you just don't participate in this? In that you may listen, you may observe, but you just don't participate in it at all. I say it's a mixture of both. I'm, I'm, okay. Like I said, my, my feet are still uh, getting wet on the whole political side, you know, learning that stuff, um, making sure I don't uh, overstep that kingdom line and uh, mm-hmm. be too involved in that than I am in the kingdom. Because um, I feel like it's very easy, and I just seen so much of it that we um, we we make it, we forget that this isn't our home. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, we definitely do need to you know, stand for righteousness and uh, definitely speak up and, and take a role in that stuff. So I'd say that yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I still don't understand the left, right, Democrat, Republican stuff. Like, I know the who's on which side and stuff, but like, I'm kingdom first, so yeah, I, I don't really go for a side. Okay, that's understandable. Um, what what is your role? You you mentioned that you're a youth pastor. Uh, is that fairly new to you? Is it something you've been doing for a minute? And and how's that been? <laughs> So that was not on the radar um, as okay. far as I know from the Lord. Um, it was just an opportunity that kind of came up. And I know that once I got saved, I really became like a magnet toward, towards the youth. Like that's my target audience. Um, mm-hmm. So when like my pastor brought it up to me and stuff and like, I was like, yeah, I'll definitely do this. You know, just taking on the, uh, the role, you know, that is there, you know, it's open. Um, not something doing long term unless the Lord says that's what he wants me to do. Um, but just filling this out for a year, you know, it's, it's been really well connecting with the kids. Um, definitely taught me, uh, some studying tools and just like helped my, my quiet time with the Lord, um, things like that. But it's been really dope, man. Got it. Um, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, I have hypothesized if, if that's a word, um, or rather I've come up with a hypothesis or my theory about the time that we're currently living in, you know, you, just, you mentioned the election, right? It was chaotic. Mm-hmm. Um, regardless of wherever you side, it was chaotic. Um, all of last year in, it, in and of itself was just chaotic um, and very dark, very mm-hmm. dark. Um, it, 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 it felt it, 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 you could feel the, in my, in my view, you could feel the powers of darkness oh, yeah. really hitting hard on a national level, but also on a personal level mm. and the infighting and all of that. And I have seen through the through COVID and through the election and through some of the stuff we even see now that the election is over and we have 
a new president mm. in some of the policy agendas, uh, regardless of party that is being pushed, I see a lot of it is cloaked in fear, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 2020, I think for many, particularly if you work in media, uh, which is the industry I work in and I criticize a lot because I, I know how manipulative the people can be. It is full of, it's just fear, 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 yeah. fear. Um, and I think a lot of that has trans has translated over or, 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 or flooded into the church, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I make a distinction in the sense that there are people who, in God's eyes, it's not black, it's not white, it's not orange, it's not yellow, it's only saved and unsaved, right? Mm-hmm. Um, believers, Christians, and non-believers. That's all that God sees. Um, and I think for the world's fear, right, the fear was almost tangible where you could touch it, right? Um, yeah. In all of that, that translated, in my view, to much of the church, particularly uh it, from what i've from what i've noticed inner city churches what are your thoughts on that so rephrase the last question what are your thoughts on this on that idea of fear i, I like i said i think it's 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 transcended the world and has morphed and flooded into the church what are your thoughts on that man that's something that I, i've been thinking about a lot lately um my family definitely looked like at first I was a little on the fear side, but um, one, of, one of my favorite uh, heroes in the faith is Smith Wigglesworth. I'm not sure if you've heard of him, yes, um, but he he would never allow people to bring newspapers into his house. And mm-hmm. uh, me personally, I don't watch the news. I muted like every like news outlet and stuff because like I know they got one agenda. It's to push fear. Um, mm-hmm. So I know like... <laughs> It's a it's a miss. We've misplaced our name tag. We we forget whose we are. We forget who we are in Christ. Um, and just I've had a lot of Christian friends, a lot of family, kind of look at me sideways because of like how I was approaching the virus and stuff, and just here and like. And my mom's like in the medical field, so it was like I was getting the whole you know. Make sure you do this, do that, stay away from there, do the other stuff. And it was like, I got tired of hearing it, man, because, like, I'm not going to live in fear, you know. And, like, you're going to, if you're constantly just consuming what's being fed to you, that that's going to be the reality. That's what you're going to see. You know, yeah. so I, I definitely have seen that seep into the church. Uh, the whole, like, you got to wear a mask and all, in the church and all this stuff like that. Like, there are certain things that I just didn't say, like, yeah, I'll, I'll wear it just, you know, because you're telling me. But, like, as far as, like, other stuff that's just, like, common sense, like, outside and just all this goofy stuff, it's just, like, come on now. Yeah. But Stuff, yeah, stuff like that has driven me completely crazy, right? I think Yeah. you get after a while, you know, mid-April, May of last year, I think we got after a while, okay, this is a serious thing. We know what to do. We are, most people who are dealing with this are adults and the children who are, who, who, the children we need to deal with are around adults and we can make our own decisions. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one thing that gets me is, and you're seeing it a little bit, not too much because you can't technically do this, but you're seeing it where some churches are separating people based on vaccination status. Right. And I, I, regardless of, if you think not all churches, I, but some, I know a couple churches personally that are doing that. And wow. Regardless of what you think about vaccines and all that, it's up to you. Consult your doctor, all of that stuff. I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving advice. Mm-hmm. But to do that, I think, is capitalizing off of fear. And, and is I think it's a, a perfect illustration of how fear has taken over mm-hmm. in many aspects. And I've always said, and I, got, I've get, I've, I've, I get a lot of heat for it. I've always said a lot of people are hiding behind uh trust the science and and wisdom every christian like i say i'm 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 you know i'm i'm using wisdom when some of it is just fear uh yes. or it is a, 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 a the skies or cloak that you're wearing to hide your lack of faith in my view mm-hmm. not all people are like that um 
so, so I think it's an interesting moment that we're in. Um, and I think sure. looking back 10, 15 years from now, particularly as Christians, we're going to see a major shift in the church and, and how things are done and, and what's left after this is, um, you know, officially over. Uh, yeah. Moving more into uh, your journey, your story, you're a youth pastor, you are a bodybuilder. Um, what what have you found? Obviously, you mentioned, you know, taking care of your temple and all of that. What have you found most gratifying? And this probably this this question is really for me because I need some motivation. Um, what do you find most gratifying about working out? Because, man, it looks like you work out every day. <laughs> Only day I don't work out is Sunday. OK, just uh, about every day. <laughs> yeah, um, it's just the. The thing for me, man, is knowing that I'm not letting myself become a couch potato, knowing that I'm not just letting my temple just ride away, that um, I'm stewarding what, what God has given me. Um, and it's very easy. I'm not going to lie. It's very easy to uh, let it become an idol. And, you know, like there's some times where I'll notice I'm getting too deep into it and I'll just have to like step back and, you know, really uh, make sure my heart is postured right. Um, but yeah, man, just really. I just love being able to take care of it and, you know, just eating the right foods and like knowing like what's not good for me. And just, I just love how, like how I feel internally and just being able to just, I just move around, man, you know, not feel like I'm having deep breaths, like every few steps that I take, like it just, it oh, just feels, <laughs> it just feels beautiful, man. And like, Believe it or not, it really ties into your spiritual life. You know, like if you're just going to sit around all day, just eating Doritos and eating fast food and binging Netflix all day, like you're going to have no motivation to spend time with God, you know. But like once you you, you uh, just get rejuvenated and you're just taking care of yourself and the, the blood's flowing and just like you, you, you just feel right, man. You're just gonna, you're going to have motivation, you know. But if you just sit around all day, you're not going to have any. Got you. Where does a person start if they're new to the gym, new to this whole workout healthy thing? Where was it? What does a person start? I've heard, and I and I believe it that mm -hmm. it actually starts before you get to the gym. You know what you eat, what you put into your yeah. body. Um, mm -hmm. So, what does a person start? If they're new to this. Man, that's that's the hardest part. It's in the kitchen. Um, just you're gonna have to find the things that are really hurting you that are in the kitchen that you love and uh, find a substitute for that's healthy. Um, just like one of the big things for me, man, was sweets. But I couldn't go like, I literally couldn't go a day without sweets. Like I just had a craving for it. I just loved it. So I said, okay, I'm going to take the sweets out. I'm going to take out the candy and I'm going to substitute it for peanuts and, you know, pistachio, and, you know, things like that. And like it became something that I liked and it cons uh, cons consisted of protein. So, it kind of, you know, tied in there. And then just like, just seeing like how I felt. And I also started using, I bought a juicer. Like I didn't know how the journey was going to go at first, but I made like first like three juices. And I was like, yo, I feel really good. I'm getting the energy that, that I usually get from my coffee, you know, from uh, the pre-workouts I used to take years ago. Like I'm getting this all naturally. This feels really good. So I started looking into more different recipes and stuff like that. And then I uh, went and upgraded my juicer. And like, bro, that thing is like such a good investment that I re really recommend for everybody, man. Just like, just beats alone. It's like, it's so good for blood flow. And just, you literally get the same thing you would get from your pre-workout. And, and it's uh, it's natural, so. Okay. Got you. What's, what would you say, what's next for you? Um, what do you see in your near future for, for, for Dante? Man, so <laughs> I am a Florida boy. I'm originally from Florida. And I all like my mom would kind of she's always been able to like Lord give her vision and dreams and stuff like that. And she would say things like, you're, you're supposed to be coming back to Florida. I see you in Florida. But I would kind of throw it away because like, I didn't want to go back to Florida. And I have never been a dreamer. But within the past year, the Lord has given me so many dreams about Florida. It's ridiculous. Like I, I, there's no way to deny this. And, and what was the icing on the cake for me? 
was I received one before I went to, um, I visited my family in Florida a month ago, a few weeks ago, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of going out there for clarity because a girl had messaged me on Instagram saying the Lord gave her a dream about me in Florida, just like preaching to people. I was like, okay, God, what's going on here? And he, I, I went to this uh, Brazilian spot, like after the thrift store. And this is my last day in Florida. I saw your post about this. Yeah. It was the like, bro, God is so intentional. I went in there and nobody was speaking in English and I didn't understand what was on the menu. None of that. I'm just kind of looking around. But the first thing I noticed was this big John 316. I was like, oh, snap. They might be Christians. And then I see over in the corner, like over like the pots and stuff where they're cooking, it said, Jesus loves you. And I noticed I was hearing some gospel music. I was like, hold up. So I went over, I took my phone and I started recording it. And I guess the, the manager came around the corner and he seen me and he goes, we're the only restaurant that keeps Jesus music playing all day, every day. And I was like, man, that is so amazing. Da, da, da. And he just goes right into sharing his testimony, man, about how the Lord uh, set him free from like drug addiction, just all this stuff. Like when he was in the streets of Brazil and how he told him to uh, open up that shop and that's going to be like his ministry. And he just literally, the only, he said like, He's financially stable. The only reason he does that is to just introduce people to Jesus. And it's like he opened up. So there was a gay bar behind there and he prayed. The Lord shut it down and they turned it into a church. <laughs> and I remember he stopped sharing his testimony very briefly. And he looks at me and he goes, the visions you've been having, the dreams you've been having are for me. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, the, I, I knew that was it. So. Mm-hmm. What's next for me, man, is I know what's calling me back to Florida. Um, I, I guess that's where he's going to just finish uh, what he had me do here. And this was kind of a season thing. I got comfortable with, you know, with the job and just everywhere I was, you know, because it just it felt comfortable, you know, just getting with all these people and stuff like that, making good money, good hours, fitting, you know, my schedule and all that good stuff. But, yeah, man, I, I know he's calling me back to Florida next year. And I don't know what's what's on the menu. Yeah, but Florida. Uh, back to Port St. Lucie. Okay. Yeah, St. Lucie West. Yeah. Okay. But just just being spirit led, man, and just letting them open up the doors. What about your clothing line? Tell me more about that. Man, like how it was birthed. Mm-hmm. I would love to hear that story. So it's crazy because I've always been somebody that was uh, into design and stuff like that, like before Christ. I used to uh, like do like promotions and stuff on social media. Like I was cool with like Fredo Santana, Waka Flocka, like all them. People don't know that, but um, I, I did like this one design. It was called uh, Hell on Earth, Don't Panic. And like it went crazy like in the fashion world. And uh, after that, it, that's when I finally like gave my life to, like it went on standstill for a solid year. And then God, God was just like, give me a new heart, you know, all this stuff. I remember making one design and I, I, it was just kind of something like I mustered up myself and like it didn't do too well. And then my buddy Montel, he was like, you got to get back on your clothing, man. You got to get back on your clothing. I was like, I don't know what to put out. And I remember sitting in my room and I'm designing something. I was like, yo, I'm going to do this. This is dope. And the Holy Spirit goes, you're nothing without me. <laughs> and instantly right there, I remember erasing everything I had on the screen and just typing that in. And I was just like, bruh. I remember I had a uh, heat press in my room. I remember I, I uh, ended up sending that design and stuff within like a week. And I made a few shirts, posted it. They went crazy. And just that's kind of like what that's why I haven't had any new designs, because he just wanted me to stick with that for a while. Um, I, okay. He still hasn't really told me he wants me to do any new designs. But it's more like I don't even like to call it a clothing brand like in its whole. But it's more just a lifestyle, man. Like. I had like a bunch of like a garbage bag you know, full of them, man. That I just want to like give out to like the homeless and stuff like that. Like I was doing like this homeless thing. I would like make my own bags with all the you know different things they need and stuff. And I had a bunch of hoodies in the trunk. And this one lady, like she didn't believe in God and all this stuff. But uh, I was telling her about the Lord. I was like, I got a hoodie for you if you can wear it. And uh, she was like, What size? I was like, Large. She gave it to her. She didn't even know what it said, but she's walking around with a hoodie that says Nothing Without Jesus. So <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's amazing. Hey, if you support the work that I'm doing on this channel, 
I would love, I would appreciate it so much if you all would go to J Shakur Media. That's J A Y S H A K U R Media dot com. Shakur, yeah, I like Tupac. Go there. If you go there, you'll see what I'm seeing now. This page. You can go click support. It'll take you to this page where you can give monthly. Support the quality, support the content. It is greatly appreciated. Help us, help me push back on the mainstream narratives. It's imperative that we do so. In this space, as long as we can, without the censorship, it's coming to us, I'm sure. I've already got one strike on this channel. But you can help keep us independent, keep us fighting, and pushing back against the mainstream narrative. As well, if you go to the same site, jshakurmedia.com, and click on podcast, you'll be able to see all our archived podcasts of the Changing the Narrative podcast, my long-form interview podcast where I talk to people from all types of backgrounds, all different places about any and everything. As well, if you go to this page, jshakurmedia.com, you will be able to click on op-eds. It will take you to this page where you'll be able to see all written content this is where we highlight, emphasize in written form ideas that we talk about on this channel, be it in a new segment or on the podcast. Here is where you can go and look. You'll be get, you'll get access to the Change in Energy podcast as well as the Jason Core Reports podcast, which is the twice a week podcast that's outputted in audio form of all the news segments that we do weekly of the most important news and commentary that we bring to you. It's all there available to you free of charge. Help us. Help independent media and help us keep it to you free of charge by going to jenshacormedia.com so i guess i'll ask it this way you know i personally don't care what you tweet out or what you you know uh say necessarily is controversial i think it, it's very much so biblical right mm -hmm. but wondering you know how they say christian twitter or whatever i'm wondering have you received if any backlash for some of the things you've shared or some of the things you said man i had some like the closest like christian brothers and sisters that i thought like were like were my people mm -hmm. that like blocked me put me on blast quote tweeted me for like all in the like all huddled up in their groups went at me like bro i've had it all what is, what was it that they were taking you want you want to know what the main thing was <laughs> it, sure it was the Trump and it was the and it was the how I was reacting to the the racism and stuff. Mm. I'm assuming, and they just I'm assuming because I've seen I've seen I can't recall like verbatim right now, but I've seen, you know, mm. some of the stuff. I'm assuming because you kept it in my in my I don't even say my view, because I'm just gonna say it outright, because you kept it biblical, right? Mm -hmm. Um they what were, what was their argument like what were they saying what, like what did they find issue with bro i had people most of my family like except for my mom my grandma my aunt my whole family is black and I had people they blocked say you that, no say, I, like i'm just saying like like most of my family is black but these people on okay. my social media they were trying to say that i was racist gotcha. i didn't care yeah. i didn't care about them they were just coming up with all this stuff. And I'm just oh. like, I, I literally had to put my phone down and just go talk to the Lord. I was like, Lord, what is oh. going on? Because I was just watching hearts just become hardened. I was mm -hmm. watching this just stuff just enter them and just become mm -hmm. built up this bitterness. And just like, I remember when the, I, I can't remember which one event it was, but I was like, make sure that you're praying for uh these da, 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 instead of like wishing like all the stuff on them man the amount of christians that were coming at me bro i was like god this is not it you this know, is I've, not it i found and you know i found personally and i've said this on, on social media I've said it publicly many times I've said it to people directly i found that we, we mentioned idols a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you talk about the gym and and how your your physique and all that can become an idol, and you need to be careful about that. I also attach to that skin color mm -hmm. or race, absolutely, right? and, act, 
in actuality, there's really o- only one race, the human mm-hmm. race created by God. And then you have eth- different ethnicities and all that stuff. But for the lack, you know, because this is the term everybody understands, I'll just use the term. Um, people have, particularly black people, pe- and black people like to hear, hear, hear this sit. I, a lot of them are like, a lot of us, I should say, I like to hear, hear this being said. But skin color, the ethnicity you belong to, the group that you belong to has become an idol. And anytime that someone like yourself says something that's outright biblical, you, you basically, mm-hmm. what you just mentioned, you said pray for people, right? Um, in the sense that, you know, pray for their souls, pray for their heart, pray that God, you know, deals with them. That's There's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, but because, and I'm only now assuming skin color, you know, tribalism, all of these things have become an idol. It it, it gets blocked out. Um, so you said you've been blocked. How has has there been any attempt to reconcile? To reconcile, have people attempted to hear hear what you're saying beyond you know the hysterics of you don't care about us? Which I obviously don't think I don't think that's true. But mm-hmm. has there been any attempt to to hear you out, or how's how's that been? There has not been one, like, wow. and and on my end, like the, the I cut the ribbon, man. You know, like I've forgiven them. You know, pray for them, all that stuff. But if they allow, they keep that bitterness in there, man. Like that's on them, and that's just gonna get that's gonna carry on, and it's just gonna get worse and worse. Um, but yeah, man, it's it was definitely sad to see. Um, I just, I just really seen how the enemy was just doing what he, he he's here to do: kill, steal, and destroy, man, and just separating us. And like, just seeing like little conversations on the timeline where they'll be like, "Oh, I, like me and my people," and just like kind of like push like like lunch tables. I was like, something ain't right here. And like, you just started to see him like just like little remarks like uh, the, they'll they'll say just YT talking about white people. And just like making like jokes and all this stuff, they'll like to to reference white people. They'll just spell it Y T. And like it took me a while to understand what it meant, but like Y T. Okay. Yeah, just saying. Yeah, that was a way of saying I, like I white people. But yeah, I just seen a division just all throughout the, the the timeline, man. And it was just so sad. Like I just really seen like how it it, it was all just a smoke screen. Like just all the stuff happening just to, for the enemy to just really come in, man, and just separate. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think is, and this is a broad question and, you know, we'll be here for 50 hours trying to, you know, answer it. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think is the solution to it? And, and, I, and, I, and I say that, I mean, like, what I've seen is obviously the division, right? There was one point mm-hmm. during, in last year made me sick to my stomach because uh, this was happening in the church, right? I expect, okay, the world going to be the world. You pray for them, you, 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 dis- you, you, you evangelize mm-hmm. and you, you know, you draw as many to Christ as you possibly can. Right there. But the world is going to be the world. Right. Yeah. So there's certain things I expect to, to happen in the world that just should not happen in the church. I don't care. Right. The, mm-hmm. the, uh, Paul said judgment first begins in the house of God. Mm-hmm. And if it begins in the house of God, what shall the end be? What shall the end be of those who do not believe? Right. And so with that being said, one of the core things that happened during this whole George Floyd thing, which I don't think anyone in their right mind agrees that what the officer did to um, George Floyd was right. No mm-hmm. one was cheering that on. Right. I don't think anyone mm-hmm. really uh, there's very few people, I think, in this country in 2020 or 2021 that agreed okay i'm glad he was killed right i don't think that's you have to be very depraved and evil to think something like that black or white right but it got to this point the whole george floyd thing the protest and the riots which is taboo to say that that there were riots there were riots all of summer 2020 um and all of this division what you saw in the church was leaders i'm not talking about you know of course all Christians are Christians and all of that, but leaders, so-called leaders, worship leaders, you know, mm-hmm. preachers, all of that, infighting, attacking, and I hate this whole white church, black church thing, but 
you know, it's how we identify stuff in America, in the U, in the United, yeah. in the Western world, I should say. Um, they were in, they were fighting white worship. I think there was one point Hill song was being attacked for not being, you know, overtly. I don't know what they, you know, but the issue was that oh, these why it was white church. I don't know if you've seen this, and it was, I don't know if you saw it, but it was like white church against black church, and it was it was disgusting. It, it made me sick to my wow. stomach. And it was being perpetrated. It was being perpetrated by leaders, um, prominent, well known black gospel artists were going on the on the attack of white gospel artists because they felt that the white gospel artists weren't saying what they wanted them to say or something to the effect. Mm. I, I, I won't name names, but it it became extremely disheartening. And I'm like, this is, these are believers. You know, we, we are in the world, but not of it. We don't ignore, you know, injustice and, 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 and stuff that's unfair. We don't ignore, we speak out against it, but we also don't allow. And I think this is another issue activism to become an idol mm -hmm. because we we're not in my in my view we're not called to be activists we're called to be disciples and to yes. make disciples of men mm -hmm. and if i so happen to engage in activism that takes a back seat to everything else right mm -hmm. um and at one point i personally like i don't think this is healthy i thought a lot of hearts were exposed last year in terms of intentions and where you know where their focus really was um and i and I, I can be a pessimist sometimes and i said okay this is this is it right i thought yeah i thought i thought death to the american church right this is it um we have lost i think or at least weakened our witness with the world that was my mm -hmm. view um you may not hold that view uh and my, and you know, it's God's church, not my church, obviously. But what do you think is a solution to this? Because I, I think while it's my view, it's died down, meaning it's not as the the temperature has, you know, kind of cooled down, and, and it's not as high on the radar. I think there's mm -hmm. an undercurrent of that, you know, kind of what you've experienced with your friends and all of that. I think it's still there. It's just waiting for another, you know, the next right moment to to surface. So there's yeah. no, there's been no true healing or solution to it. What do you mm -hmm. think could help that? Man, my solution is going to stay the same and always the same because I feel like if I say any other temporary solution outside of Christ, it, it it's just stupid. Um, mm -hmm. But like just getting people to truly know who they are in Christ, to truly know Christ, because with knowing Christ, you're going to see your brothers and sisters as Christ sees them. And like, just like through, through the world, like, of course, I'm not gonna expect the world to see that, but like being out there, you know, raising your fist in their face and throwing stuff at them and beating them and calling them all this, that, that's not gonna get anybody to, to give their heart to Christ. Like that's, that's not gonna do anything but make the things worse. Um, yeah. But I think that was one of the biggest tweets that got the most controversy. I seen how I tweeted so many have put down their cross to become activists and so many Christian rappers were like coming at me and all this stuff. And when I would check their profile, it would be a big black banner that says black lives matter fist up hashtag activists. And I was like, I see what's going on. I see what's going on here. This stuff is being idolized. But once we get back to, the realization of what we are called to do, knowing that Jesus is the only solution. I know people will make the takes like, "What about the people in the, uh, back in the when they were in the church and their and their KKK mass and all that stuff?" Like, there's going to be a lot of people that go through the religious motions, claim Christ, but they don't know him at all. And you got to you got to judge the tree by its fruit, you know. But my my solution stays the same, man. Get people to know Christ intimately. Yeah, definitely. I think we've lost him as the focus, and that's quite sad. Um, yes, I don't care what it is, as, as political as I am, right? I, I, and I'm mostly that way because I, I'm a reporter, and I do, I, I report on politics, so I, I have mm -hmm. to kind of pay attention to it. 
Sometimes I don't want to, but I have to kind of, you know, listen, see what's going on, regardless of what, you know, who's in office or whatever. I still have to try to, you know, and then also on top of that, I'm a Christian. So I have biblical values that if you, if a certain politician, I don't care what party um, does not align with, I can't support you. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, again, I never personally tell people who to vote for. I think that's, I think Christian has common sense to know what is right. And yeah. you have the Holy Spirit to convict you, you know what to support. Um, and a vote is an endorsement. So it's up to you to you know figure out what you want to endorse. But mm-hmm. uh, I so I have to kind of be that, you know, I have to be political in that sense of reporting on it and talking about it and, you know, all of that news and all of that. But at the end of the day, and I have to always constantly remind myself of this while you report on this, while you work in this and you do this you are a Christian uh, mm-hmm. and Christ comes first. And if Christ is not the focus in whatever it is, then you should probably back up and check your intentions and check your motives and all of that. Um, yes. And I think we need to get back to that. I think the simple message is Jesus saves. I think that yes. that's the two words that can sum up everything mm-hmm. that is Christianity. If we get back to those two things, those two words, Jesus saves, we would be in a better uh, um position as the body of christ and this country would be in a better position because it doesn't start i personally don't i personally think you could tell what's going on or you could tell the direction of a country of a nation based on not what goes on necessarily in the white house or the state house or the whatever but what goes on in the church um Mm -hmm. i forget who said it it was some it was one of the generals of the faith i forget either uh or roberts or a. N. Trotter, one of the generals, they said that as the church goes, so goes the nation, right? And so I always ask myself when I step back from the political and all of that, why are we where we are right now, right? Why are we where we are where we could have a whole summer of burning and looting? And why are we where we are where we cannot even wear a Republican? Regardless, again, I'm not either Republican or Democrat, but mm-hmm. if you are, if you do identify with one of those parties, why is it we're at the place where Republican and Democrat can't sit in the same room? Mm. Most of the time, most of the, of course, that's not all situations. But if you're a Trump supporter, you can't sit in the room with a, with a Joe Biden supporter and without, you know, want to fight each other. I think that is a commentary on where the church is. I think I think it goes back to our witness, our witness to the world. Is it being is it stronger? Is it weaker? Are we living? Because I think the greatest sermon ever preached is a life lived for Christ. Well, mm. um, and some people never read that, read a Bible, or pick up a Bible in their life or never pick up a Bible before coming to Christ. But they they watch you or they watch me. Yes. And that will be uh, Paul talked about living epistles. Right. That would mm-hmm. be their witness. And that would yes. draw them, you know, before they get to the Bible, before they get to the even the church. Right. Um some people aren't like you you were saved uh and you you were brought to christ in church i was brought to christ in a church setting right some mm-hmm. people get saved at the bar you know and they walk away from the bar put the drink down they're saved right some people get saved in different you know but i i, I think we just we've we've compromised that simple message jesus saved jesus mm-hmm. saves for all these other things and, and i think it's Again, as you mentioned, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Um, John 10 and 10. And I think we have allowed, and sometimes he destroys through distraction. Mm. He doesn't necessarily have to come and, you know, knock everything down and turn everything over as we think it happens all the mm-hmm. time. He could just distract you. And yeah. in that distraction is is your, is your destruction. Um, mm. So kind of wrapping this up. Um, what have you found? I'll, I'll phrase it this way: If if a young man was watching is watching this or listens to this, he's in your position, or she, a young lady, in your position, um, or similar to where you were before Christ. You know, they may be addicted to drugs, addicted to pornography. They may be saved, and some Christians don't understand this, but they may be saved and still addicted um, to the drugs because. That's that's a reality for many Christians. That many Christians walk around addicted to painkillers, right? Mm-hmm. Or other things. 
they may be addicted to what is your what would be your message to that young person that young man the young woman that is dealing with things they don't necessarily have the support system um they don't necessarily know what to do what would be your message to them man my message to you would be to get to that place where jesus is all that matters like you get you get sick even thinking that there's things in you that are not of him and just just stay at his feet just if you have to stay there for hours if you have to stay there for a day stay there and let him just fill you man let him just replenish you let his let his word just safeguard your mind let just let his word just just be your life and just meditate on his word man and just know what his word says about you know that you are a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Know that you are the righteousness of God. I totally, obviously, I totally agree. Um, favorite scripture. Last, my last question to you. Favorite scripture. It's going to be the one that I got uh, on the tattoo here, man. Proverbs twenty twenty four, and that is, it's the Lord that directs our steps. So why try to understand along the way? That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you, Dante, for talking to me, um, sharing Thank your you, story, man. Uh, sharing your journey. Um, I'm sure people listen to this, watch this, and they will be helped. Um, I personally admire your your stance, your passion, your fire for God. Um, Thank you, man. I've been saved since I was nine years old, so that's been what? Um, it's been a long time. I'll say that. I can't. <laughs> it's been over, you know, 10 years. Um, and your fire and passion truly inspires me. Um, there's mm-hmm. times you tweet out, say, read your Bible. And I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> it's like, wow. it's, a, it's, I'm like, yeah, um, I'm not above that, you know, mm-hmm. correction or that reminder. So I, I, it's, it's appreciated on my end. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's definitely something I pay attention to. Um, and it's, 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 a inspiration to me um wow whether you knew that or not so i appreciate that man thank you for taking the time uh i love in the future as you know uh you transition and do whatever to have you back on so again thank you man that'd be awesome man thank you for this opportunity definitely definitely hope you guys enjoyed that conversation i had with dante lee it was an inspiring encouraging conversation i learned a lot i was inspired i was provoked to go out and be a bolder Christian, a stronger Christian, and be a positive, kind witness for Jesus Christ. Great conversation. Hope this helped you. I hope you like something that was said. Hope you learned something from what was said. I want you guys to support the channel. You can support the channel by going to jshakormedia.com, clicking the support button, giving monthly to help support the content that we're doing and the expansion we hope to do soon. Or you can just go to jasonquarmedia.com, contact me by clicking the contact button or commenting below if you're watching via YouTube and tell me what you think of the show, what you think of what we're doing, what you thought of this episode, what you like, what you didn't like. Your feedback is greatly, greatly appreciated. Again, thank you all for the support. Thank you all for listening. Hope you guys learned something from this edition of Changing the Narrative. You don't become what you want because so much of wanting is about living in the space of what you don't have. I believe that we all share this common desire. We all want to be liked. We all want to be accepted. Everything we do in some way considers that fact. You can't play life you don't have vision. You don't build your character because, you know, you know, letting go of your ego. Thank you for listening.